Okay, in our last module of Unit 4, we're going to be looking at how solar radiation affects seasons and affects our climates. Alright, so the term that we use for the amount of sunlight or incoming solar radiation is insulation with an I, with a O, not a U, like insulation, but insulation. Um, and as you can see, uh, the most direct sunlight or insulation occurs at the equator, so it covers a smaller surface area, whereas towards the poles, where it's more of an indirect angle, it covers a larger surface area. So we know that solar radiation is Earth's main source of energy, um, and the amount of insulation depends on what season it is and also depends on our latitude. Again, at the equator, um, we have more direct therefore greater insulation than we do our higher latitudes at the North Pole and the South Pole. All right, so the angle of the sun's rays is what determines the intensity of solar radiation, which is why at the poles we have less insulation than we do at the equator. And it's what is directly horizontal to the insulation or the solar radiation that receives the most intensity. So as seasons change, uh, the amount of intensity actually is not the highest at the equator, but it depends on which hemisphere is tilted towards or away from the sun. All right, so again, the highest radiation per unit area is gonna be at the equator, um, and then it's spread out because it's at um, a greater angle as we move to the poles. Okay, so when we talk about the amount of insulation, also we talk about seasons um, and climate changes on Earth. It all depends on the motion of the Earth. So the first motion that we're gonna look at is rotation. The Earth is spinning on its axis, which is what gives us day and night. It takes 24 hours to rotate on our axis. So for half of that time, we're facing towards the sun, it's daytime. The other half, we're tilted away, it's nighttime. Now the other thing that the motions of the Earth affect is plant productivity, because the greater the insulation, the more photosynthesis and energy that's being produced by our primary producers. All right, so if we look at revolution, which is our orbit around the sun, that's one year, or 365 and one fourth days. Every fourth year, we add on that extra day to February, or leap year. Uh, but our orbit is not a circle, it's actually an elliptical shape, which is kind of an oval. So during part of our orbit, we are closer to the sun. That actually occurs in January. That's called the perihelion. We are the farthest from the sun in June, which is aphelion. So what that tells us is that our distance to the sun has no effect on our seasons, because we're farther from the sun in June, which is summertime in the northern hemisphere. What controls seasons is the tilt of our axis. We are tilted at 23 and one half degrees. Um, so when we are tilted away from the sun in the northern hemisphere, that would be winter. And it's gonna be the opposite in southern hemisphere. They're tilted towards the sun. Because remember, what is horizontal to that insulation is what gets the most direct sunlight or has greater amount of energy. Therefore, you're gonna have warmer temperatures. In addition to season, it also affects the hours of daylight. That's why during the summertime, we have more hours of daylight. In the wintertime, we have more hours of darkness. All right, so if we look at our orbit around the sun and the tilt of the axis, a couple things to notice. When the northern hemisphere is tilted at our max away from the sun, that's around December 22nd. We call that the winter solstice. That's also the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere. But it's the longest day of the year in the middle of the summer in the southern hemisphere. Um, as we rotate around the sun after uh, winter, we have spring. This is called the equinox because we aren't tilted towards or away from the sun. So along the equator, you would have equal hours of daylight, equal hours of darkness. As we rotate on around, our axis is still at that 23 and a half degrees. Now the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So our summer solstice, June 22nd, the longest day of the year. In the northern hemisphere, shortest day of the year in the middle of the winter or first day of winter for southern hemisphere. 
Moving on around to the autumnal equinox again. Um, notice that axis is not tilted toward or away from the sun. So you have equal hours of daylight and darkness at the equator. Um, and then that is usually our first day of fall around September 22nd, 23rd. All right, so the amount of solar radiation is going to vary seasonally because of that tilt of the axis. Um, so northern hemisphere, longest day of the year, summer solstice. Um, and then our shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere is the winter solstice. 